Okay, for this assignment, um, I just opened up Bryce. I'm going to be showing you how to do a quick animated loop. Um, this is a great way to start with practicing um, the control palette and time uh, controls that are in Bryce. So first and foremost, what I'm going to do is set up my scene. And that's very important to do once you start kind of setting up your final project. You need to make sure that your scene is set up. So first we're going to go to File and I'll show you a couple of things here. In Document Setup, now this can be set up at the very end before you render out. And it's important to note that we're probably going to be rendering out at a standard size document resolution of 640 to 480 with a 4 to 3 ratio aspect and then we'll render that out perhaps at 50 percent so the render resolution here will cut that in half as well now um, for my taste that's a little bit too small so i like to set this up at 880 uh, to 660 and then cut that in half. So at least the render is at 440 to 330. Um, or you could leave it at the 1 to 1 ratio. If I click OK here, you'll see that it's still fairly small, but it's enough, uh, big enough for you to be able to set up your scene. So I'm going to leave that for now. And the next thing I want to do, again, I'm setting up for the challenge one of the animated loop. So I want a flat gray background. And I want my camera to director, so I need to do that next. Set camera to director. Um, this is going to remind you of the first assignment where we just have gray background and a solid gray uh, ground plane. I want to go ahead and throw in a light in there. So right now is the time for me to set up the scene. Uh, for this assignment, you're just going to need a pyramid, a light, and a sphere. And you want to make that a little, stretch it up a little bit, make that pyramid a little bit taller to fill your scene. And then a sphere. I'm going to drag that out. Kind of lift that above ground if you can see here. Now, if I don't set it upright, I can rotate uh, my camera angle a little bit using the ca uh, camera trackball. Uh, next, I'm going to go over, and you can see here that this is the camera view. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate my camera a little bit there in the camera view, not director's view. Um, Next, what I'm going to do is go to the top view. Now, this is where you're going to, going to be seeing your trajectory of the animation. Currently, we don't have anything, and I'm going to show you how to get to that. So in this, what you want to do is the very at the very bottom right-hand corner, you'll see that there's a palette toggle. And if you, uh, you scroll over it, you'll see that it tells you on the left-hand side what the time, uh, what that tool is. You can toggle between this, so if you're currently seeing selection, you can toggle to the time palette. You'll notice that you have a little playback uh, buttons here that are similar to uh, what you used to have as a VCR player or anything like that. You can pause or stop and then play buttons. Um, you also have <clears throat> a, re a preview animation button here, but that's not really needed. If you click there, you'll see that it, nothing comes up because I don't have animation set up yet. So these, these are just our animation tools, but they'll start working as soon as I have animation set up. Let's do that now. I'm going to go up to File and I'm going to go to animation setup and what I need to do is set up my animation for a duration. Now here in current that's going to tell you what your current timeline is looking like and you, you see nothing there. 
Under duration is where you need to put in your, your, your time. This is going to be a very short animation of only um, three seconds, or actually one second. Uh, this is very short because we're going to animate the loop or repeat it. So in duration under seconds, and this is set up in hour, minute, second, and frame, uh, which is the SMPTE time, uh, the Society of Motion Pictures and Television uh, Engineers came up with that. So there's, that's actually a thing. If you go online, you can see and read all about that. But this is a uh, standard used by um, a lot of animators. In FPS, that's frames per second, you see, you currently see a 24 there. We're gonna bring that down to 10 for this animation because we don't have that much or that many uh, textures to this. This is very plain. You don't need that many frames per second. It's a very short animation as well. Typically the standard is set at 24 uh, and that's a little bit too high. The more frames per second that you have, the more frame numbers you're going to have. Like an old school animation, um, you'll see that um, every, uh, every in-between actually has a frame. So in this case, I have 10 frames per second. I have one second on the timeline here in duration under the second. And you can see here a number of frames is going to give me 10. And down in the play area, what you want to do is click repeat. And although some players will actually not really uh, follow that rule, uh, we do want to at least put in here repeat. The rest stays the same and we click OK. Now at the very bottom of your timeline, so this is the timeline and this is the scrub timeline, the scrubber. So you'll go up in time or move forward in time and then bring it back. Um, it's important that you make sure that you're at the first keyframe. You have a button for that in the playback. So I'm going to click first keyframe. You can also toggle to the last keyframe by clicking on the last keyframe button here to advance you in the timeline. Okay. Currently I have my sphere selected. And uh, there's one thing that I want to check as well in attributes. I want to make sure that under the animation tab, I actually have show when selected. So we want trajectory to be showing um, when we select and when we start adding animation. This is usually typically the default, so you wouldn't really have to check that unless you don't see the trajectory. And I'll show you what that looks like in just a minute. Again, I have my sphere selected and I'm working from the top view. I'm going to do a simple loop around this pyramid. So the first thing I want to do is make sure that I have auto key on. There's this really uh, kind of a down triangle timeline options. Click there. Make sure that auto key is checked. Now if it's checked and you check on it again, it's actually going to turn it off. So you have to make sure that you check it make sure that it's checked but don't click on it again just click outside that'll maintain the auto key function as on okay adding keyframes is rather simple you see that you have a yellow key that's highlighted here and you have a plus sign or a negative sign on the other you guessed it you remove it with the negative or the minus sign, and you add it with a um, add keyframe. And what we're doing here is again, we're adding a um, keyframe and then the Bryce program, if anyone has ever used um, like Adobe Flash or anything like that, it's gonna fill in the in-betweens because we have auto key on. So the mantra here is add keyframe Make sure that it turns yellow. 
scrub forward in your timeline a couple of clicks move your object and then repeat so scrub a couple of keyframes move your object scrub move the object and now you can see that there's a traje trajectory that's happening here and the little dots are representing where I have in the timeline a keyframe. So I'm going to take that way to the last keyframe and then I'm going to close, not really close this up, I want to leave a little gap there so it'll be smooth. Now if I go to the camera view you'll see that this is pretty much lined up and you can actually click through or advanced in your keyframe. Let's see if I can go back here. There we go. I'm going back in the timeline here. And I can actually see where my trajectory is happening. And I can actually adjust that here if I wanted to. I can make one go up or down. So you can play around with the trajectory and uh, fix that if you'd like. So say this is kind of a little bit too much. It might run it outside of that area. I want to bring that trajectory in a little bit. And then I can test this so I can play it. And it looks like a pretty smooth loop. I'll stop that. Now word of caution when you are actually playing and stopping within this preview, it, it can crash on you. So I highly recommend that you save your document. So save, save it as a Bryce working file first. That way you can come back to it if it does in fact crash on you. Again, last name, first initial, and just put a loop next to it. It's going to be uploaded in the challenge area. And I'll put that out on my desktop for now. I'll save it and then go ahead and try to preview it. But uh, again, I can't tell you how often students will start using that playback button, um, especially if you have more materials. Um, it's going to most likely crash, unfortunately, but so you definitely want to have a backup of your work. So let's animate this or let's render this out as an animation. This is going to be a little bit different than your last assignments. Um, it needs to be rendered out as an animation and not saved as an, as an image. So we're going to go to File, Render Animation. And here it pops up this Render Animation uh, little menu bar or menu box, dialog box. Hit entire duration, so make sure that's a red dot there. And output module, you want to hit the edit button here. And you've got several choices on a Cinepack. What th this is going to do is going to compress that video and let you play it back. Um, so again, it's going to put it in the video format for you. Now in the lab, you'll have access to Intel IYUV. You can go ahead and use that. If you have Cinepack, you can use that as well, but start out with the Intel IUV. It doesn't matter which one you choose. There's two listed on mine. I'll just choose that and hit OK. Nothing else needs to be done with that. If you are choosing Kodak by radius, you want to select it and then bring up your quality to at least 90, between 97 to 100. And nothing else changes and you click OK. I'll go ahead and change it back to my Intel, click OK. The next most important thing to do is set the location. You want to set it every time that you render something out. You'll see that I've already got one in this area. But I'll go ahead and save it over that. And 
Make sure that the save as type is a movie or AVI, whatever it gives you. Click save. I'm going to replace this. And you never ever want to render on net network. So if you're in the lab, make sure that you never, ren never turn this render on network on. But always set your location to the desktop. That way you will be able to find your file. Name it accordingly and then click OK. It's going to go through the process of rendering. You Again, it's, the, it's as important as rendering an image. You want to let all the lines go through. Um, it's going to go through every frame. As you can see here, it's ironing out every frame um, that we, we, we're going through. And there's actually 11 frames. Uh, Bryce actually adds one additional frame. So say I have 10 frames on there, it's going to add an additional frame. If you have 20 frames per second, it's going to add an additional frame, so you have 21. At the very bottom uh, of your screen, where it shows you the time where it's anti-aliasing, you can see the elapsed time, the remaining time, typically. But this is going to be a fairly simple um, animation. You can see that it didn't repeat, although I had chose it. So in this case, what I can do is just click on my player to repeat and then play through it. And that's the challenge. Um, this, I would definitely suggest that you practice quite a bit. Maybe try playing around with your trajectory. Um, and when you feel comfortable using those animated basic, basic tools, I would continue to the next challenge.